Um, okay, so hopping over to the East, Georgia Vandy. It's a weird one for us because we've talked about Vandy a little, a little bit more than we're used to this year. Uh, and after that Alabama game, there was, uh, there was a lot of negativity. But to Derek Mason's credit, he he kind of circled the wagons and got them ready to play for Florida, and that was a closer game than the scoreboard indicated. On the other side of the fence, we had a Georgia-Tennessee game that you and I both predicted was going to be a pretty big pretty big blowout, um, and the model predicted it as well. So kind of like the Auburn-Ole Miss game, and Georgia fans, if you didn't haven't checked that one out yet, maybe give that one a look because you know, you're going to play Auburn in a couple of weeks. Um, kind of like the Auburn-Ole Miss game where I said everybody was low on Auburn, we weren't low on Auburn all year. We were, were kind of high on Auburn all year. And now after Mercer, when they've blown out all these other teams, everybody might be swinging a little too high on Auburn. So I want to ask you kind of the same question for Georgia. Everybody's flying sky high on Georgia right now. You know, discussion of top five team, playoff team, maybe going to beat Bama in the SEC championship game, which neither one of them have qualified for yet. Um so the long lead into this question is, are we reading too much into what George has done so far based on competition not being that great, or is Georgia a legit playoff contender? I think probably a little bit too much is being read out of what they've done against competition, but at the same time, I don't see any reason why that doesn't make them a playoff contender. The two aren't mutually exclusive, and... Our model did say last week uh, it had uh, Georgia winning 31-13 against Tennessee. We both thought it would be a little worse than that. It ended up being worse than that, mainly because it snowballed. Tennessee gave up. But Georgia didn't dominate that game early. They dominated once. Tennessee started turning the ball over and wore themselves out going three and out. Tennessee looked terrible. And frankly, every indication we have at this point is that Tennessee has just quit in the locker room. So... That game to me really was genuinely more about Tennessee giving up as a football team than it was the fact that Georgia was necessarily ascending to the point where they would absolutely thump someone 41 nothing that was that good. Georgia had to be very good to take advantage of it, but again, their first few drives weren't great. Uh, they only really got rolling once Tennessee had kind of given up the ghost a little bit and, and it sort of stopped operating at the kind of elite level that they had managed to do. Uh, no point ever, but look like it early in the game. If you thought that Tennessee was that good. So either you buy that Tennessee was a very good team to stop Georgia uh, on the first few possessions where, or, you know, maybe Tennessee just gave up when, when this game hit 17 to nothing. Cause Georgia did have three, four, five, six. They had 10 points on the first six possessions, w which is solid, but that's about half of what a normal game is for most people. Uh, most teams end up with somewhere between 12 and 15 possessions a game. Georgia had 10 points and six possessions, and that was really where the ball got rolling. And then after that point, it was touchdown, touchdown, two punts, touchdown, touchdown, field goal, end of game. So it, it just it snowballed. I, I think there's a little bit too much being read out of that. And then when you look at the rest of them, Mississippi State got run out just as bad by Auburn as by Georgia. Now, I think Auburn's a very good team as well, but we have a one-game sample of Mississippi State beating LSU. We just saw what happened at LSU, so you have to get that with a grain of salt. And the next big win was over a Notre Dame team that also hasn't really done a whole lot to date to prove themselves. They, they beat up on Michigan State and Boston College. Michigan State was a three-win team last year. Boston College is pretty darn terrible themselves. And in that Notre Dame game, you know, it was a tight game. They weren't really dominant in an area, but their ability to stop Notre Dame's rush attack, other than that, it was pretty evenly matched. So I think Georgia still has a lot more to prove. I just think the biggest issue, and this is the case for most everyone in the SEC, we just had a long discussion, as you said, with the Auburn Ole Miss game. Problem is, it's easy to say they have a lot to prove because there's no one to prove it against in the SEC. And the floor has fallen so low and the sec is down so much last year we spent the whole season trumpeting and saying the sec is not getting as much credit as they should they were a lot better than they were made out to be the the rankings didn't really reflect where the teams were because they beat each other up the bowl record reflected that 
This year, frankly, for the first time in as long as I can remember, I, I'm honestly going to say the SEC is genuinely down. Most of the teams are quite poor, and Tennessee falls in that mold. Mississippi State may, and you know what? Vanderbilt probably does too. All right, so uh, we haven't talked much about Vanny's performance against Florida yet, um, and, and I want to get into that a little bit. I, I was encouraged by what I saw from Vanderbilt bouncing back from the Alabama game. And I thought what they faced in Alabama was a lot of matchup problems. And and the number, the final score was really bad. And we don't think Vanderbilt's great on this show, at least from what we've seen so far. Kind of like we've done in other videos, is there anything that Vanderbilt does that should give Georgia fans a concern or that should give, could give this Georgia football team a little trouble on Saturday? Yeah, I think there is to a certain extent in that Vanderbilt does have a good pass defense. I don't think they're as good as they were kind of cracked up to be, but they've played several teams that have remarkably good yard per attempt averages, and they're still holding teams to six yards per attempt, which is excellent. Uh, It's 84% of opponent averages, and really it's very good. Now, you know, I'll I'll go ahead and concede right now. They're giving up 109% of opponent rush attempt uh, that's not good that's not good that's not that's that's not good at all so this whole number one rush defense thing and we flagged it before the alabama game i think very successfully their rush defense was totally a product of the teams they played and the way our model works we do look at how you do versus opponent averages and what we came out of the way from the model is statistically they were completely average for what the other teams had faced and they were average compared to say charlotte for Kansas state, you know, they weren't any better than Charlotte was when facing Kansas state. It just middle Tennessee, they opened the season. Oh, they hold them to 50 yards rushing. That's great. Middle Tennessee state has not rushed for hundred yards in a game yet. So that's kind of Vanderbilt's problem, but Georgia has not been overly successful running the ball. They had a lot of success against Tennessee. We talked about last week, and I know a lot of Georgia fans listened. Tennessee's rush defensive statistics were atrocious. 133% of opponents' averages was, I'm pretty sure, the worst we've ever modeled. So we predicted that they were going to be able to run the ball over Tennessee simply, frankly, because Tennessee was that bad. Not to say that Georgia can't run the ball successfully but because they can, but Tennessee was so bad that they weren't even going to have to throw the ball, and that changes every the dynamics of everything about the football game. Vanderbilt is not that bad, okay? So Georgia shouldn't be able to run the ball every play and never throw it and get first downs. They're going to have to throw it some. And when they do throw the football, Vanderbilt is probably the best pass defense they've faced, and they are better by far than everyone they've faced since Notre Dame. And again, Frum really struggled against Notre Dame. So if you want me to identify something, it's I don't know that they're going to be able to maintain a 50-50 balance, or if they have to maintain a 50-50 balance, that they're going to be that successful. They're probably going to struggle converting third and long type situations because Vanderbilt does have a pretty darn good pass defense. Um, but that said, you're asking me to sort of reach for straws. The reality of the situation is Vanderbilt is still not on the level of Georgia and probably, frankly, isn't a very good football team. And I think one of the things that I saw Vanderbilt struggle with against Alabama that Florida really couldn't replicate that I think Georgia probably can is sheer athleticism and speed on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, I I agree with that. Vanderbilt's issue really is talent. And what Vanderbilt did is they took their defense and they shrank it. And Mason talked about this a lot in the preseason that they use at times, what was essentially three defensive ends or multiple linebackers in the line of scrimmage, they have some sets where they'll have two linebackers on the line of scrimmage, not not in a 3-4 sense, but just straight up lined up with their hand in the dirt. And then the linebackers are essentially safeties, and then the safeties are essentially corners. And he wanted to make – he knew they had a talent gap, and he felt like they weren't fast enough, so he put faster players in the field. The problem is – that means you're smaller in the SEC. And we were concerned about that a couple of weeks ago when we did the Alabama Vandy preview. I'm still concerned about it. Uh, and what ends up happening is they've got run over for a couple of weeks. 
I think they're going to have to reevaluate that a little bit. But the problem is the moment they try to get bigger to account for the run game, it exposes the fact that their bigger players are not athletic enough to cover in space. Georgia has the athletes to expose them, and it ends up being a catch-22. Either they go with the smaller fronts and the smaller players that they've been trying to use, in which case Chubb is going to you know, hit a defensive end and carry him for three yards because it's essentially a linebacker, or they go bigger to deal with the run game, in which case they probably don't have the athleticism necessary to cover Sony Michelle coming out in the flat. And it's just, it's a Jimmy's and Joe's issue. I don't know that there's any way to deal with it, but I do think Vanderbilt would be a lot better off if they just conceded that you can't go too small. Going small is not a great idea in the SEC and it creates problems. I, I think they're better off just playing bigger guys and stopping the run and making from beat you with his arm as a true freshman. Uh, and if they do that, though, I think Georgia will be able to score points through athleticism. <clears throat> my my concern there, frankly, I'm going to be really honest. I don't have as much faith in Mason as a lot of people do. I, I, I saw I see a lot of things that have taken a decline from Franklin to Mason that I think a lot of people don't appreciate. I don't think the drop off should have been as dramatic as it has been. And a lot of their wins the past couple of years have come late in the season against teams that were like Tennessee that are horribly injury ridden and have basically given up. I think Mason is kind of lucky, frankly, to have the record that he does have. And I don't have confidence Mason's going to appreciate the fact that he probably does need to get bigger to address these issues. I think he's going to say smaller. And if he does that, uh, you know, Georgia may be able to run the ball at will pretty well. And that this game is going to get out of hand fast. Well, Let's stop guessing and let's see what the numbers say. So this week, uh, your model, Georgia Vandy, what does it say? It has Georgia 32, Vandy essentially 1-3. Uh, there's a fun caveat here. I have to give Vanderbilt some points for the Alabama game. I can't give them a total shutout because the way my math works, if I say Vanderbilt scored zero points, I end up dividing by zero. So I have to give them 0.1 point or 0.5 points. And whatever that decimal point is changes whether they get one point or three points or a touchdown on the scoreboard. But it's kind of, I know it's cheating, but it's just the math involved. And I don't, I'm not smart enough at the moment to figure out a way to route around it. Not that the model is simple to start with. Regardless, it it really comes down to the fact that Georgia has an excellent run defense. 60% of opponent averages an excellent pass defense at 73% of opponent averages and Vanderbilt's run defense is very suspect, and the pass and the only real good unit they have is the pass defense. More importantly, Vanderbilt's offense is already anemic: two yards per carry, seven yards per pass. Uh, so they're only expected to get three point three yards per per play. If you have less than four yards per play, your offense isn't going to really function. We talk about that a lot. Georgia at five point seven yards per play is going to have a pretty functional offense, and given that score that yardage. To, discrepancy it, it looks to be a lot like the Tennessee or Mississippi State game where things just kind of pile up and, and it gets worse late but the the one interesting thing here and I'm, I'm going to say it again it's as much as we had this long discussion about who Fromm's faced there's also an additional problem that Georgia is yet to face a single team that averages more than 6.1 yards per attempt and that you know what does that translate to that means that Georgia is yet to face a single team in the top 100 nationally in yard per attempt passing averages. Not a single one. Now, their statistics have done that to teams because they've battered teams in the passing game, but still, they have not been tested to any degree in the passing game. Shermer averages 7.1 yards per attempt. I don't think Shermer is as good as a lot of people think he is. I know we're pretty much on the same page there because we look at his statistics. When he's played better teams, he's kind of curled into a ball. That said, Shermer is actually, this is the best passing attack that they will have faced so far. So the one caveat there is maybe Vanderbilt can generate a little bit with Shermer's arm. I still don't see it though. Vanderbilt's offensive line is struggling way too much. I think there's way too much penetration and I think that 32 to one score is, is probably a fair representation of how this game's going to go. Yeah, I'll go ahead and give my score too. I, I think this game will be pretty short because um, we we're not going to see either team come out slinging the ball around. Both teams are going to run it even even early. Georgia's going to run the ball. Uh, 
and it's just going to, by virtue of that, create a short game, which is going to create fewer scoring opportunities for Georgia, um, even though I do think they're going to get some short fields. I'm going to go 35-6, to six, and um, I could see it being a little lower on the Georgia side, but I think most of that is reflected in the difference, and Alabama is a perfect example, in the difference in having a true freshman quarterback who you're still worried about getting wins and doing things the right way and doing things on schedule and having a sophomore quarterback who is more worried about fine-tuning fine skills. So I think if this same game with these two same teams were played next year with Fromm as a second-year starter, it would be a lot uglier. Um, But because of that, uh, I think you're going to have a little more ugly game uh, which is going to lead to a, a lower score than than Georgia fans probably want to see just because of transit of property to see how they compare to Alabama, and and I don't think that's fair. Right, and, you know, I, I guess to go with my gut score here, I already gave the whole discussion, but I don't think Mason is going to adjust the way he needs to to this game, and I think it's going to start a little more shaky than Georgia fans are going to expect. I don't think Fromm – I think Fromm's going to get exposed a little bit passing the football, frankly. I, I think he's going to struggle to a certain extent. But I think what's going to happen is Georgia's defense, like the Tennessee game, is just going to take over, probably generate some turnovers. I think Vanderbilt's offense is going to be a three-and-out machine. And Vanderbilt's run defense is too suspect. I think they are not going to size up the way they should. And over the course of the game, Georgia's run offense is going to be able to take over and run away with it. I don't think it's going to be pretty. I think the score is going to get out of hand. I think it's going to end up being something like 42 to three, but it's going to be that the teams were a lot more evenly matched, probably low scoring for the first quarter or two, probably quarter and a half. And then they just, the moment Vanderbilt gets tired, Georgia's just going to run the ball down their throat and put up touchdown after touchdown. while Vanderbilt gets more in a pass first mode to catch up. And it's just going to get out of hand. The other factor that we haven't really discussed yet that may not be a factor, maybe maybe Mason's got him going, but um, kind of like we discussed with Auburn and Ole Miss, there's this whole f- quit factor involved. And after a back-breaking loss to Alabama and kind of a heartbreaking loss where you circle the wagons to Florida, it, it's hard to know if this Vanderbilt team has anything left in the tank. And if they do have that quit factor at play, I could see this being so super ugly like just just steamroll city um what do you think about that there's truth to it i think the one thing vanderbilt has going for them though is it's kind of strange to say they have players that are used to losing and they have intelligent players not you know not that to say that every guy's a road scholar and is ever and everybody in georgia's a, a, you know a dumb jock that's not really true at all in reality but they do have to recruit at a certain level just to make it through their mandatory curriculum. So you've got a lot of guys that are more high character guys at Vanderbilt than most teams. And they've got guys that don't aren't emotional. And really my opinion, teams quit when they have high expectation. When you have a team like Ole Miss, where you recruit guys that are number one at their position and they come in there to win a conference championship and they get there and they're terrible. Or, or the two all two loss LSU factor. Exactly. It, we've talked about that a lot. When LSU loses two games in a season, Every every time they've done that since the Les Miles got to LSU, they immediately became a less than 500 team. And I think it was – they had like a 90% winning percentage up till the second loss, and they became 50% win percentage. And my theory on that is LSU players are very emotional and very felt, set on winning. Vandy doesn't have that issue. It's kind of an advantage in a game – in a season like this because they can move past it a little faster. Uh, that said, I mean, it, it's still – it's tough. I think Ole, Ole Miss <laughs> – is an interesting one because Ole Miss can't run the ball and can only throw. And I think Vanderbilt has a very good chance to upset Ole Miss because their pass defense is actually pretty darn good. Uh, and Ole Miss is completely unequipped to deal, you know, exploit Vanderbilt's issues in the run game. So it doesn't take a lot to t- get to six wins. You you win that game. You win Western Kentucky, who isn't the same Western Kentucky they were. And you beat the Missouri team that may be the worst team in the East in the past decade. And boom, you're at six wins. So I think the virtue of things is really the SEC is so down that a Vanderbilt team that would not have made a bowl by any means four years ago has a pretty solid shot to make a bowl 
and actually could finish with, you know, seven wins in the season, despite frankly, not being a very good football team. 